Hi, I'm Paul Hopewell. Welcome back to my shed. My workload at the moment is very high. Through this very short clip, I want to show you why and what I'm going to be doing in the next few videos. As you can see, I've collected another lathe. It's not new and it's not in brilliant condition either. I knew this as soon as I saw it. The truth is, I bought this 1940 South Bend 13 inch lathe ultimately to increase my potential in the workshop. Despite the fact that there's nowhere in my workshop for the cat to swing a mouse, meant that I had to employ, at no cost to me, an ergonomic space creating engineer and a painter. After my knees had made a big enough hole in the carpet, my wife agreed to the challenge. You may be wondering why there's no picture of a fully assembled lathe before I started. You might be wondering why there's no video. Well, the lathe was seen working and I even had a go on it before it was disassembled and plonked in the back of the van. I didn't want to insult the guy by insisting that I take a picture of it before I took it away. Also, it's because moving the entire workshop about to make room for the latest addition meant that stuff had to be moved out of the way and the box with the camera stuff in it vanished for a while so I had to do everything on my phone. That aside, it's going to be a very big project for me and it has the potential to become a very expensive project. I've mentioned in the past that I'm a pensioner and I have to work to a budget. More now because the cost of living here has just gone stupid. My challenge is going to be a big one, huge in fact, because the slides are worn, there's at least one broken gear, the tailstock is badly out of alignment, the motor's too slow, I haven't even got a straight edge, not even a repeater meter. I haven't got a linear grinder that's big enough to regrind the slideways, but then again, who has? I've made some inquiries at the cost of regrinding the main bed and for replacing the broken gear, but it's astronomical. Even a Teflon strip, the Tersite B, is governed by strict import controls here in the UK. So this is my challenge. I'm going to repair the main bed slides myself. I know that I can't make them as good as a professional outfit, but I'm certain I can improve it from where it is at the moment. I've got to make a big enough straight edge using whatever material I can get, and I'll need a narrow repeater meter, so I'll have to make that as well. I may have to make one or two extra items to help me complete this mammoth task. I know it'll be like polishing a turd. Hell, after spending a lifetime of doing just that, that sort of makes me an expert. To start with, I've already replaced the 940 RPM motor with a one horsepower three phase unit. It's a 1420 RPM four pole motor that I found on eBay. I even obtained two new V-belts into the bargain. The paintwork is now looking the part. I'm using the same paint as that that I used on the shaper. The original paintwork was fine, for, for the most part, but some was beginning to flake off in places. The main bed is 72 inches long, 1.8 metres. To say that this machine weighs a bit is a bit of an understatement. It made my wife puff and pant a bit while moving it about. It made my back hurt just looking at it. The plan right now was to get all the base units painted and assembled. The under motor base unit is now sitting on a one and a half inch thick wood base and the two legs are sat on 15 millimeter metal plate sporting the two jacks. These two jacks provide the ability to level the main bed and remove the twist from the bedways. I'm going to leave it to settle a few days while keeping an eye on the spirit level. 
for the moment the main bed is going to be the last thing assembled onto the pedestals until the bedways have been sorted. And yes, they're going to be dressed in situ. Wish me luck, I think I'm going to need it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.